Hey everyone, Wags from Eagle Dynamics, and this week in the open beta we have some really cool stuff to add. This includes the latent trackball scan, some updates to the identification system, as well as a joint directed attack mission with the JDAM. Let's get started. Okay, so for this uh, first identification, we're just going to be using our onboard sensors, our radar and IFF, and we won't be using any offboard uh, donors like a AWACS or another fighter on the uh, data link. So, first we're going to go ahead and make sure we have the IFF uh, turned on. Let's see if that is on. And then here on the uh, left DDI, we see we have uh, three contacts out there. We'll go ahead and assign the TDC uh, to the SA page. And right now they're all uh, shown as unknown. But if we go ahead and we put the uh, TDC over uh, the second contact here and we depress on the sensor select switch, we see we have a friendly identification uh, because for uh, setting an unknown to a friendly, all you need is a mode for identification. It's only when you want to set an unknown to hostile, do you need at least two identification methods? A uh, mode four plus either a uh, fighter donor, a surveillance, or the NCTR. Because if we go and we try to do a mode four IFF on the uh, first contact here, we're not getting any identification because we have, uh, again, no donor and no NCTR on this guy. Then we come here to the radar Let's go ahead and uh, lock this guy up, put him as a STT. And we see that it's a MiG-29. Now again, for uh, NCTR identification, uh, the contact needs to be between usually at max 24 to 23 nautical miles and 30 degrees off the nose or off the table, uh, tail. So now we have NCTR and we can go ahead and mode for this guy, put the TDC over depress and we have identification as a hostile. Now let's go ahead and uh, undesignate this guy. Now we go to the, uh, the top guy which we have not identified yet. We'll go ahead and uh, lock him up and without even uh, putting the uh, TDC over the contact on the SA page, we can go ahead and do a mode four interrogation on this guy. And we see that again, is also a hostile. So in summary, with uh, no donors, you can uh, identify uh, unknown to friendly by just a mode four identification. And for hostile, you will need uh, a mode four identification along with NCTR. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at this with a fighter donor. Now, in this uh, next example, we'll be using some offboard donors. And this holds true either for a surveillance, uh, like an AWACS, or a fighter donor, like a uh, friendly F-15 with Link-16. So as you can see on the left DDI, we have uh, three contacts out there. Uh, based on the lower half foo, we see that one is friendly and the other two are hostile. Now in this case, because we have uh, donor information, we don't need NCTR. All we need is a mode four interrogation and an off-board sensor, in this case, an E2. So again, if we place the uh, cursor uh, over the contact and we depress the sensor select switch, we see that it's friendly, which again, we wouldn't need action off-board contact uh, for that. Uh, whereas if we go to one of the unknowns uh, on the top half foo, but uh, hostile on the bottom, if we do a mode 4 on this one now, without NCTR, we see that it's hostile, and it should be the same for this one. So we have an unknown on the top, a hostile on the bottom from the E2, uh, interrogate, and also hostile. So those are the basics of how you uh, do an identification uh, with IFF in combination with offboard donors. Uh, next, we'll take a look at some of the uh, new IFF interrogations for an already locked up target.
Okay, now we'll take a look at the ability to uh, interrogate a target in IFF that's already been locked up on radar uh, before you had to do it while in search mode. So, in this case, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll select a Sidewinder, put this in Boresight, lock them up, and as you can see right now, it's a, a square indicating unknown, but now we can go ahead and press, uh, depress the sensor select switch, and now it transfers to a diamond, which indicates hostile. And you can uh, not just do this in ACM mode, but you can also essentially tag a target on the uh, radar in STT and interrogate it uh, that way as well without having to go to the SA page. And the next element we'll take a look at is when you have a hostile target locked up, but also a donor fighter has the same aircraft locked up and identified a hostile as well, you'll now have an additional uh, Hafu carrot over the top of the diamond to indicate that you have at least one other donor aircraft that has identified the same aircraft as a hostile. Alrighty, so now let's talk about latent tracker scan motor, LTWS. Uh, we're going to have an initial version of this uh, available this week. And the thing about uh, latent tracker scan is it allows you to get uh, detailed tracking information for up to three targets simultaneously, much better than you have in range all search mode, which actually they do, it does track, uh, track files, it's just not displayed as a detail as you will have in LTWS and later TWS. So in enable, to enable track while scan mode, we're gonna go to uh, the data page and enable LTWS from push 115. And it's important to remember two things. Uh, the first is the, uh, the level of detail of the tracking. It's not sufficient to support uh, a weapon launch. So it's only for uh, surveillance, not for actually engaging. To engage a target, you'll need to go to an SDT or later on a uh, trackable scan or a TWS mode. Uh, the other is the uh, refresh rate is pretty slow. So it's pretty easy to lose a track file uh, when you have a huge area that you're searching, like a, a 140 azimuth and a high bar setting. So when you're using a uh, latent trackable scan, it's best to be between one and two bars and maybe 60 or 80 or even less uh, in terms of your azimuth. And this will give you a much better tracking. Now the cool thing is, we can go ahead now and uh, place the TDC over target. And we uh, get uh, the track file now of its mock and altitude, as well as it automatically mode 4 IFFs it. And we can do this for all three, one at a time. It's called a target under cursor or a tuck. Now the cool thing is we can now go ahead and uh, tuck and then designate. And this now becomes our LNS, our launch and steering target, which also gives the weapon law, our launch acceptable region, for the selected uh, weapon. And also you have that star half foo. And we can do it a second time, this guy up here, designate, and that becomes the designated target two or DT2, and it also has a LAR. And third, we can put the uh, cursor over the third target, and we have track file information on that. So we can actually mo be monitoring uh, three targets all at the same time. And we come up to the HUD, we see that the LNS is the diamond, and the uh, cross here is our DT2. So that's a little look at the uh, latent track while scan that's coming. All right, so the last thing we're going to take a look at is the JDAM, or the Joint Direct Attack Munition, which is a um, uh, guided INS slash GPS uh, guided weapon. And it comes in uh, three different flavors, uh, 500, 1,000, and 2,000 uh, pound class bombs. And uh, we're going to be including all three. Originally, we're going to uh, do just the uh, 500 and 2,000 class. And then later on, we're going to be doing the 1,000 uh, GBU-32. So let's get started, see how this works. So we'll go to uh, air ground master mode. We'll select uh, J82, which is the uh, GBU-38 uh, 500 class uh, JDAM. And first we'll see we have a timer counting down from 10, which is aligning the uh, guidance kits on all the loaded uh, JDAMs. And once it gets down to about seven minutes, 30 seconds, we'll have um, uh, a good uh, quality of alignment at that point. Uh, we have two different modes for the JDAM and the JSAL, uh, pre-planned mode 
and uh, target of opportunity mode or TOO. Now for the pre-planned mode, you'll have up to uh, six pre-planned missions you can do ahead of time uh, through the editor. And, but also while you're actually in flight, you can also reprogram those uh, points as well. And then you have the TOO mode, which kind of like the uh, harm, you can uh, dynamically set a uh, weapon zone or a weapon target uh, based on either a, a waypoint or designated through a sensor like a targeting pod and so on. But we'll start with the uh, pre-plan mode first. Uh, we come down to uh, E-Fuse, we'll set that to instantaneous. And then that will come over to the uh, uh, JDAM display and uh, we'll come down to the release type and we're going to do the manual mode. So for the initial um, open beta this week, we're going to be doing manual mode and later on we're going to be adding the uh, auto mode. Uh, also, uh, that will include the uh, dynamic launch zones as well. And then coming over, we're going to set the quantity we want to drop. We're going to do one. And now we can go to the mission. And like I said before, we have uh, six different uh, pre-plan missions we can set. Uh, right now we have uh, pre-plan one uh, selected as its box, but it's crossed out because we don't have valid data uh, for this target yet. So let's do this right now. So we're going to go to uh, target UFC and uh, we're going to select position. Now we'll set the uh, lat long and height of the target for this pre-plan mission. So go uh, lat we're going to go uh, a northing, and we're going to put in a coordinate of 27, 13, 49, enter, enter, and then a height of 23 feet, enter, and then a longitude with an easting of 56, 22, 53, enter, enter. And now we'll see here on the SMS, this is our target coordinate and we're all set there. So now we're going to uh, come back out and we'll have the ability to put in the terminal guidance for this JDAM, whether uh, we want it to uh, attack from a certain angle, uh, an azimuth or a uh, attack uh, from the top and also its speed. And this will come uh, a little bit later, uh, but for now we can actually enter the data. So for example, we can go terminal, uh, we can go heading, for instance, say 300 degrees, an angular of, uh, say, 90 degrees directly top down, and then a velocity of 700 uh, feet per second. And all this information is uh, indicated down here in the uh, terminal box. And at this point now, you'll see, because we have uh, a valid coordinate in there, the X is removed from the PP1 box. So we turn back out. And coming back on the HUD now, uh, we can see that we have a diamond on the heading tape, which indicates direction towards that target. Uh, the flashing uh, diamond here will be placed uh, over the target itself on the ground. And we have a countdown timer to the um, time to maximum range around two minutes. Again, we are in manual mode. We have a JU82 JDAM selected and pre plan mode. So we take off the autopilot now. And let's come to that target. And because we're in manual mode, we're not going to have an ASL or an asthma steering line. So what we're going to do is we're going to align uh, the diamond on the heading tape with a carrot on the heading tape. And that'll pretty much bring us to exactly where we need to be. And then we'll keep a close eye on the uh, TMR and the HUD. And once that reaches zero, we'll get essentially a in-range cue. And at that point, we can release this JDAM. And it's uh, at that point, um, uh, fire and forget. And it'll home in the target all by itself. So about one minute out. And then once we have the uh, automatic modes in, we're gonna again have the dynamic launch zone. So it'll actually give you indications of maximum range, optimal range, minimum ranges, and things like that, as well as the ability to do different uh, uh, launch uh, loft drops as well to really extend the JDAM ranges. And of course, when that uh, diamond on the HUD is uh, off the field of view, you have the arrow in the center of the HUD that points in the direction. And the number on top is the degrees away. It's about uh, 27 seconds out. And naturally, once we get that in-range cube, we're going to press and hold down the uh, weapon release button until that bomb comes off the jet, uh, not just a quick press. 
11 seconds. Zero and in range, one away. Yeah, let's watch this from the outside. And nice on target. So that's a pre-plan mode. Now let's take a look at a TOO mode, or again, a target of opportunity. We may have most everything already set up. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the mode. We're going to select TOO. Uh, we see everyone's already on uh, station seven already. Type release is already going to be manual. We're not going to have to put in a coordinate because what we're going to do is we're going to tie it into a waypoint in this case, waypoint one. So we'll come down to the HSI. Go waypoint, waypoint one, weapon designate. And then let's bring in the HSI up over here so we can better see it. We'll see we have a circle now, and the circle indicates the, uh, the maximum range of that drop with the diamond in the middle indicating the target. And as you might imagine, again, here on the HUD, uh, because we're in manual mode, we have a, a diamond uh, on the heading tape, and we don't have an ASL. So let's go ahead and bring us to that target. Yeah, you can see that circle dynamically increase or decrease based on our azimuth off the target. And just like pre-planned mode, we'll have the uh, other diamond uh, on the HUD superimposed over our designated target. We'll line up the diamond on the heading tape with the carrot on the heading tape to bring us on the proper azimuth for the drop. Our TMR is almost at 10 seconds, 10 seconds. Waiting for zero. Three, two, one. In range and weapon away. So as you can see, the JDAMs are quite accurate as well. And the great thing about a JDAM is, you know, unlike laser-guided bombs, you don't have to worry about uh, fog or clouds obscuring, and you don't have to continually track and designate that target uh, during the drop of that weapon. It's a much more simple and effective weapon to use. Anyhow, I really enjoyed, I hope you enjoyed this video of, you know, taking a look at the JDAM, the latent track wall scan, and some of the updates in the identification system. I'll see you next time. Thanks.